Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to our coverage of the 20th annual Fairhope Jubilee out at the Fairways of Fairhope. Again, I am Dust Murray, and once again, joining me on the commentary is Mr. J.C. Rowe. How's it going, sir? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, the front 10 is wrapped up. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But as you can see, Ben still out in front, but Colin hot on his heels, just three strokes behind, and after that, it is a tight race for the top five. Just a couple of strokes separating our players here as we get into one of our very last technical holes. Yeah, hole 12, a uh, place downhill, uh, 240 feet. You're really just trying to hazard flip a putter and filter it down to this little goalie at the bottom. Something like that, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, just like that. <laughs> Textbook hyzer flip shot there from Ben Fulford is... We are going to see Downey here going with the Envy, his go-to throwing putter. A little more oh, hyzer. boy. Flips up a little more as well. Two up and so far, two perfect shots. See if Colin can follow the vapor trails here. See, he's throwing a proxy. And, man, he gave that one a little run. Yeah, from back here, it looked like it was online for the basket, but just playing for the uh, the easy birdie instead. Looks like uh, maybe that PA5 you were talking about last 10 here from Mr. Gates. And a beautiful shot from Jeremy. Flipping it up nicely as well. Silas looking to follow suit. I mean, we're four for four, so pressure's on here for Silas to try to match. As this is, again, one of the tighter fairways on the course, and so far our lead card is handling it flawlessly. And Silas, no exception. Look at this one. Also trying to chase the chains a little bit there. And look at this group. That's our furthest putt. Jeremy making it easy. Press these guys. Should have tap ins. You have a little debris on the backside used as a backstop, but uh, should be no problem. Hey, I feel like you probably don't see too many star frames on this hole, and this lead card has the potential to do it. Uh, this this one's probably pretty easy as far as the wooded holes are concerned. But yeah, maybe maybe one out of four, one out of five would not get. I mean, that is dead and unattached, Silas. I'll give you that. But that thing's also bigger than you. <laughs> I mean, hey, man, do what you got to do, all right? Yeah, I mean, he gets the birdie, so, you know, fair enough. This game we're talking about something the front 10. Silas just 14 years old and already one of the most competitive MPO players in kind of this area. Yeah, Silas, um, he's not accepting cash right now, still wants to play Am Worlds, so uh, look for him on the big stage. I imagine he'll be up there in the ranks. Absolutely, as we head over to the old batting cage hole. Yeah, hole 13 is probably the toughest wooded hole on this course. Oh. Um, probably ranks in the top three. And um, you really just want to hazard flip a fairway down the middle, Chris going with a mid-range uh, because he throws far. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so you really just want to push it down as straight as possible and then maybe a little left finish. This is leaking right for Colin, but gets a beautiful kiss. Wow. And a fist bump. What a shot, man. It's going to give him a birdie chance. Yeah, he's been doing everything he can to catch Ben and um, fortunate enough to get a little luck there as well. Uh, he's been playing exceptionally well on the front ten. Yeah, Colin's always consistently been one of those guys who can look to to finish strong in these events in the southeast as a great shot from Jeremy as well. Yeah, he probably thought he pulled it a little right, but um, fortunate enough to go through the gap with a flipping enough disc. I believe this is an eagle from Silas. I think he likes the Barsby Eagles. Just a little bit of an early release there from Silas, but might still be able to scramble for par. That is the better miss. Uh, it is way more open on the left side. Very true. 
Owen just gets around that tree to make sure he can have a chance at a par save as Ben in a, a lot of trouble here. As you can see, that he's on the right side and um, really the only play is overhand or just really throw it as hard as you can. Plays it really well, though. Uh, he should Absolutely. have about a 35-foot putt. As you can see, Downey in kind of a similar situation, but I think he had a little bit more of an open look, and so he's able to jump putt out here. And so Ben actually even getting a meter off this OB fence, and so it gets him a little closer for a par save. Drano. He's definitely trying to keep that lead. Colin should have a look for two, so he doesn't want to lose too many strokes on this one hole. As we see, Jeremy here has a chance at birdie two after a great drive. And he will execute. As he's kind of in his own little foot race with Silas for a top three position. And Chris. Absolutely. That'll put Colin, I believe, within two now of Ben. So it looked like Ben running away with it at the beginning of the round. Uh, Colin is actually making it a game, which is fun to watch. Absolutely. So we get into the old island hole, and unfortunately, Colin was a little faster than I was prepared for, but we still caught the shot here. <laughs> That's a great one at that. Yeah, so... On this island, you can elect a layup uh, if you'd like, but um, if not, if you don't hit the island, you go to a drop zone. Uh, this hole, typically one of the windier holes, we're moving out of the woods, and uh, so this hole can be very intimidating, especially with these uh, posts that block people from parking on the fairway. Yeah, we'll say the wind started to kind of die down at this point in the round, so our car was pretty confident in running the island. The only other thing you have to worry about is the furry friends over on the right-hand side in the dog park. Cause, uh, they could razz you. They, they definitely could. Or people could just walk across, you know, and you got to wait for them. And so th this hole can sometimes be a mental issue as we hear some screams in the background, and we'll explain why in a second. Yeah, he's running. <laughs> and there was indeed an ace, which we will catch you up on the information on that in a moment here is... Downey puts a good shot down the lane. Yeah, playing to that tree gives you about a 20-foot putt, maybe less depending on if you get around it or not. Um, definitely the better play. So, so far, everyone has found the island off the tee. And Silas will be no exception. Flirting with that ceiling, but no problem. Puts it under the basket. A little bit of a longer putt here for Jeremy. But he nails it. So not only are we five for five on the island, but we might also be finding a star frame. As I was hearing that this was only one of two cards where the whole card made the island off the tee. The other card was my card. Well, there the you go. <laughs> there you go. You would expect that the, uh, the MPO filled gets on the island, but stuff happens. Indeed it does. As we'll see a star frame here from the lead cards. We head over to hole B, which I would imagine is probably, I don't know if it's the easiest hole in the course, but it certainly feels like it. Uh, this hole actually played as one of the tougher holes in the course. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, I, I'm mistaken. One, it is one of the easiest holes in the course. <laughs> okay. Just a routine hyzer. Uh, you can filter down the hill. Uh, and there is OB right and deep, but uh, most of these guys are going to take an overstable putter or mid and um, just throw it out uh, wide. A little short there, as they were calling out from Jeremy, but he still will roll forward into near circle one territory. Ben kind of going more straight at it and parks it. No obstacles in the way. You just want to throw your best shot to get 260 feet. Ah, just 
that's Chris just not playing it wide enough for that overstable of a disc. Or maybe he just put too much hyzer angle on it. Either way, a misfire that's going to cost him potentially a stroke here on the field. Yeah, he looked down into speed. He may have had bad footing coming off the asphalt to the natural. Silas really smooth this pool. Filters down a little bit, but should have a routine 20-footer, 15 feet maybe. Yeah, Chris has the longest look of the bunch here. Catches some chains, but not enough of them. So he'll have to settle for par on this one while the rest of the card has some birdie looks. And Jeremy will find the two. Yeah, despite being short, still cashes it in. Keeping up with Silas here is looking to keep it square with him at 16 under par if you can make this putt. Chris will fall one behind with the par on this hole. Colin's still within two of Ben. And it'll probably stay that way based on where they landed. Routine tap ins for the rest of the card. Ben with the CTP. Yeah, Ben just has to make sure he doesn't hit his head on his way over to the basket as uh, he parked that one for sure as we now head over to hole 15. Yeah, hole 15 lets you lo uh, let loose a little bit. Uh, you don't want to filter down to the ditch over to the right, so typically you'll see the miss, as Colin did, over to the left. Uh, it says 325. It plays a little longer than that, I believe, even though it's downhill. Most of these guys are probably going to take a fairway or maybe an overstable mid and throw it down. That's kind of the more common line you see is something that's kind of hung a little wider right and then kind of try to hyzer it into the green. If you wind up being too far up the slope left, you kind of are just laying up for par at that point. It's basically a death putt up there. Yeah, the basket is only about five feet away from the slope of the ditch. I mean, Ben walks away just knowing that's good. Doesn't even need to see it. <laughs> Silas very enthusiastic about his competitor shot. He's a cool kid. Yeah, he just loves the game of disc golf. Really does. And again, uh, we mentioned this on the front, Tim, but we'll mention again, this is actually his first time ever being on coverage of any sort, and he was really excited about it, and this is a brilliant shot. Yeah, so when you see the disc land and skip, it's probably going to be a little short. Um, gives you some options to either lay up or run it. That needs to hit something quick. Chris ripping on a rock and um, gets all of that one. Yeah, tree save and a long uphill putt, though. He had a couple of misfires off the tee here. Yeah, in this position, he's got some limbs in the way, and so the ceiling <sighs> could be a factor, but it wasn't. Man, or nearly it found was. it. <laughs> And, I mean, that's kind of the common strategy there. Just out of position, forehand lays that one up. Silas, on the other hand, feeling a little bit more brave. It's that young ambition. This would be a huge putt for him if he could land it. We'll get him right back even with Jeremy. And what a putt from Silas. I've been in that position before. That is a nervy putt. Uh, nerves of steel from Silas there. Very well done. He's Jeremy. been all over it all day and finally connects on one. Jeremy here looking to not get big putted. Um, very intimidating putt still, even though he's only about 30 feet. Oh, and I mean, he is just a hair high. That's good. He was committed, though, so. Being here looking to gain one back on Colin. Mm-hmm. And he will do just that, so that I'll space it back to three strokes. With just a few holes left to play. 
Silas also just tied it up with Jeremy um, with that putt he just made. Chris probably still hanging around somewhere near the top five at this point as we head on over to hole 16. Hole 16 plays uphill, low ceiling. Most competitors will take a fairway or mid range and throw it, try to get a skip and to this field or this fence to the left of the basket. Yeah, Ben just plays it a little too low, but it's really tough to get the height just right because the ceiling is something you're gonna have to challenge. And yeah. well, Silas does it perfectly. That sidewalk there is ooh. <laughs> that sidewalk there as well doesn't really allow skips. It's more of a porous, uh, good for the ankle sidewalk. Yeah. Worth noting that it's not OB or anything like that. Only the road far right is out of bounds, or if you go over the fence. But usually it kind of just plays as a backstop. Yeah, and Colin played the play that I described earlier, just playing it into the fence, with giving himself like. A 15 foot putt. Jeremy elected not to fight with that ceiling. Looks like he's going around the outside. Or, never mind. Trying to get an ace away, trying to do. <laughs> so that was definitely a great line. That's what Chris wants to do here. He tries to play the turnover, but just doesn't get it. And that's a nasty kick. And that branch actually might have saved him from throwing it over the fence out of bounds. Ben not happy about that putt at all. He knows that Colin is within 15 feet and needs to maintain his lead. No way. Let's look at that again. Rejected. Yeah, as I mentioned in round one, some of these older baskets, they do have gaps in the chains. Uh, unfortunately, that one fights through and hits the pole and bounces back. That would have been a brilliant par save, too, from Downey. That's a very unfortunate bogey to take. You can see Silas's drive. He definitely gave it a run. Uh, almost aced it. Um, and... One thing to note, uh, we did have an ace on this hole. Uh, as you heard in the previous holes, uh, Braden, Braden Glosson snagging the ace. I believe he threw a glow roadrunner and uh, all air. Wow. Well done. As we are on to hole A, where I took a little bit of a different camera angle, which I think you'll appreciate. Yeah, hole A, the only thing you really have to worry about is not throwing it too deep and getting it over the fence. Uh, most of these players are just going to throw a routine hyzer, very similar to hole B. Now, so far, so good here from the lead card. Everyone kind of just taking that common hyzer out you were talking about and put themselves in great position for birdie. On days when this hole is more, or when it's more windy, this hole can be very, very intimidating on the green, but uh, very calm conditions right now, so. Oh, you see uh, Chris was actually trying to go for a grenade there, but just didn't quite get the forward roll he was looking for. So a long putt now ahead of him. That's an interesting play. Yeah, I actually asked him about this, and he just said that he felt more comfortable with it, and he actually parked it the first round. But this time around, not going to get the same result. So Colin needs this putt to keep up with Ben. That's a missed opportunity there. That's going to give Ben a chance to creep back forward. Yeah, the stroke that he just gained on the last hole is now lost. So it should be three strokes with three to play now. I see a couple of par tap-ins here, but it is going to be Ben grabbing birdie as well as Silas parked as well for birdie. Keeping him, you know, right there next to Jeremy. And 
here we have hole 17. Uh, Salas looking for the turnover shot. Most players will throw a forehand and try to skip it off this road that plays as a river out of bounds. The left side is in bounds unless you go over the fence for the football field. Um, as you see Jeremy lining up, I believe a forehand firebird. Yeah, I would say the, the forehand, if you've got it, is usually the more common play, whether you want to play it high and spike it in or play a skip shot. The only thing you really have to worry about is just not pressing it too far for. There is OB deep behind the basket that, if you juice it, you could find. Right, the, the road shapes for the forehand shot, so you can possibly keep your disc over the road the whole time. Ben, oh no, a nasty roll. He needs to hope it gets all the way across. Oh my. <laughs> that is so fortunate. I believe that's two years in a row that I've seen him have a shot like that happen. It's hard to know whether he got fortunate or unfortunate. Unfortunate to hit the tree, but fortunate it rolled. Colin fortunate that it didn't kick off the tree into the road. And Chris not waiting for this car. He's ready to go. <laughs> so both Colin and Ben need to navigate these trees. Low ceiling. Probably just laying up for par. And that... Worst case scenario. Whoops. Already three strokes behind and now a chance... I mean, at best, he's losing another stroke to Ben with just two holes left to play. And Ben actually has a look for the birdie as well, so he could cash this. Oh, man, just a little high. But he's still going to par the hole, and that's that's going to be... Two more strokes. Yeah, so probably. Total. Great birdie there from Downey. So now I get the Silas. He too will be just a touch high. Oh, may, okay, so maybe, maybe only four strokes total. Now you're right. Four or five. <laughs> now, now, now we're on the, uh, on the outs here. So that is gonna really just kind of put Ben in a position now where he can just kind of coast to victory, really. Right, par, par to finish out, and then um, he would be fine. Yeah, but he's and, looking to birdie those as well. So. Yeah, with the holes coming up, I mean, unlikely he takes worse than par. And so, kind of just doing a victory lap these next couple of holes where the rest just kind of jockey for position on the podium. That pushes Jeremy up into a tie with Colin as well, so that's uh, it's a new battle. Indeed it is. I think he put that one a little wider than he wanted to, so he's going to have a lengthy birdie putt from the back side of the green. Yeah, hole 18, the second easiest hole in the course. Just routine forehand uh, if you've got it. There is OB deep, but I don't think any of these guys are going to hit it. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't say it comes into play. Most of these guys are going to have the distance control to not really worry about it. Salas not really committing to the uphill shot, kind of filters down the hill. He'll still have a look, but a long one. And Ben kind of realizing that, you know, having this five-stroke lead, he just needs to, you know, play his game and should be walking away with the trophy. Throwing it kind of high, maybe trying to give it a bid, but uh, instead just hitting the pole. You know, another, another head knocker. That's going to be another birdie for Ben. And so Colin, at best, will just be able to keep it within five going to the final hole, which is... Not ideal. Right. So right now he's just trying to make sure that Jeremy doesn't catch him. That was a pretty great shot. Probably 15, 20 feet. Chance for Silas to try to tie things up with Jeremy in his own right if he can grab this putt. At least for now. And nails it. Well played from Silas. Can't say I'm surprised. He's, yeah. He's got player. an all-around game. 
so this is for Jeremy to try to get back ahead of Silas. And misses the chance. And that might even be a tester coming back. Whew, that one tried to come back out. Yeah, Chris here trying to finish strong and uh, almost gets an unfortunate bounce out again. Jeremy able to clean up the long comeback. I believe that ties him and Silas up mm -hmm. now. Indeed it does. Colin gaining the stroke on Jeremy. Yeah, so that'll put him back in second probably with Silas and Jeremy. Tied for third. Mm -hmm. And we go to our final hole here, hole 19. The only difficulty about this hole is the OB deep. You don't want to push it too long. Uh, most of these players will disc down for distance control and just throw a harder shot. That's really not that much different than hole B. Right. Uh, you, you have the out-of-bounds right, but that doesn't come into play. Um, so essentially the same shot. And so far, so good from our lead car. Both players putting themselves in good position for birdie. And again, this is kind of just... The victory tour for Ben right now. As Ben throws that shot, he probably has a inner sigh of relief. Colin got it pretty close, but uh, he's able to take this one down after a really hot first round. Yeah, 17 down in the first round. If you didn't see the front 10, we mentioned that, and that was actually only maybe one stroke off the record, I think, that Cameron Coldglazer said a while back. Slightly different layout, but yeah. Of course, that was one of the rare over 1,100 rated rounds out there that Cam got for that round years back. But yeah, Ben was very close to it the first round and cashes in here on the second round for a victory. I believe that's an A1 from Jeremy. Comes up a little Make short. Make one for Daddy. I'll keep that in. I did keep it in. <laughs> so me and Jeremy are having a little bit of fun with each other throughout the round. For clarification, he is not my daddy. <laughs> He's old enough to be, though. Is he? No. <laughs> okay. I didn't think so. <laughs> Strong finish, though, with that birdie putt. Yes, daddy. He did do it. Colin will need to hit this putt in order to stay one ahead of Jeremy. A little bit of pressure here. Nails it. That will secure him second. Unless someone on the chase card had a huge move. That should keep him just behind Ben. As Ben looking just to kind of tap in to put in the finishing touches of a nice victory out here at the 20th Annual Fairhope Jubilee. That will be the eyes dotted and T's crossed there for Ben on a victory. As we see the rest of the car just kind of clean up. Chris getting it to slide in. Not the round he wanted, but. And so that is going to do it. We'll take a look here at our final scores. Some. Hot rounds here, and Ben with a big win, but Jeremy and Tyler's able to tie on the podium for third while Colin takes the second, and Chris ties for seventh, and let's take a look at how the rest of the field play, because JC, you did pretty well here this second round, the hot round of it, getting the fifth. Yeah, I had a few things, the back nine, really, or back ten, really got going for me, but, uh, you know, congrats to Ben uh, and Colin and everybody else that played really well. Yeah, we appreciate you all tuning in here. Hope that you'll follow and subscribe for more content from me. Also, I'll put links down below for Mr. JC Rowe here. Be sure to follow him as well, one of our great local pros. And it was great having you, JC, for the commentary for this event. Great, great being here.